It's the time of the year when holiday music sounds as fresh as the stacks of Christmas trees being sold at your local firehouse. With some degree of melancholy, however, we know that in another month or so, we'll be dragging those trees down the driveway and onto the curb while searching for some music without so much comfort and joy to keep us busy until the birds of spring begin to chirp. But we're not there yet. The days are short, and the novelty of a cozy, warm evening by the fire, with a softly murmuring hi-fi in the background, has not yet worn off. And what better music to hear than some Christmas tunes, both traditional and popular. But what to choose? There's no shortage of places to find the stuff, but it's not so simple to find enduring holiday classics crafted with care, skill, and class. Acclaimed jazz and pop singer Jane Monheit knows her way around a Christmas song or two, and she's here to prove it on her newest release, The Merriest. The celebrated vocalist has released many albums, several of which have appeared on the Billboard jazz charts, and of course she's entertained audiences all over the world. Here, however, Jane handpicks some of her favorite Christmas tunes with a crack band backing her up. John Pizzarelli even comes by with his guitar to join her on a rendition of That Holiday Feeling. Jane and I discuss her relationship with the holidays, the lush production behind the album, some dates she'll be performing in support of the new album, and much more. If you're searching for something familiar, yet fresh, to accompany you through the holiday season this year, consider giving Jane Monheit's new album a spin. So, this is exciting. A brand new holiday album. It's called The Merriest. And it is the merriest time of the year. Oh, we, who do we have there? Who's joining us? Sorry, this is Charlotte. She... <laughs> She insists on being a part of everything. Well, you know, she's, Charlotte needs her time in the in the spot. <laughs> what can I tell you? So, congrats! This is exciting. Holiday records are exciting. It's uh, it's exciting to have you do this. What? Tell me about the project a little bit here. Well, this is my second holiday album, and I've honestly wanted to make a second one since I made the first seventeen years ago, um, for various reasons. Number one being that I'm like that crazy Christmas fanatic lady. Like I am that person. My tree has been up for almost a month. Like, I mean, like- Artificial, I hope. I'm hardcore. So, uh, you know, I love the Christmas songs. The material is such a beautiful part of the Great American Songbook. So I was really looking forward to making this second Christmas album for a long time, but knew I had to had to wait, you know, a nice period of time before I did it. And it was great timing. Um, you know, my label, Club 44 Records, they were super into the idea. We had so much fun making it. It was great. Well, that's awesome. And you've got uh, a very special guest here who was actually a guest on my show many years ago, uh, John Pizzarelli uh spent some time with me to talk about his mccartney album he did a he did an album of mccartney solo music which was really an interesting angle on that and i had a good chat with him there and now he's here with you on what i feel is uh one of the more interesting songs on the album it's one i didn't know and it's a great it's a great tune tell me about that holiday feeling well, um, that holiday feeling was originally recorded by Steve and Edie, of course, Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet. There's a really fabulous version of the tune by them that, you know, plays on the radio all the time at this time of year. And I've always really loved the tune. Um, and I, I love John Pizzarelli. I mean, I've worked with him a ton over the years. We've recorded several duets together and toured together. But honestly, I'm kind of just his biggest fan. Okay. You know I mean? So I knew from the very beginning that I you know, really wanted to have John on the album and thank goodness he said yes. And uh, he's just so wonderful. He's as great of a guy as he is a musician. Very cool. His dad is, of course, from Patterson, which is where I grew up just about uh, 10 minutes from here. So he's a he's a fellow Jersey boy, just like I am. So he's a nice guy. Awesome. We Jersey boys are nice people. So, you know, it's funny, the Christmas music, uh, holiday music has become such a thing around this time of the year as all the, all the radio stations flip and uh, a very early, early, as you said, you have your tree up, so you're one of those people. But how do you take these tunes that are so, you know, we've kind of heard them so many times. How did you kind of, when you were approaching this album, want to inject your own thing in there, add a little uh, something fresh uh, to it in the, the production process? Well, I think the secret there, um, well, there's sort of like two secrets. Number one, you have to really pick songs that are meaningful to you. You know what I mean? Instead of just dealing with, you know, 
material that like, well, I think people would like it if I did Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but I don't like that tune. Not a great reason to record a song because it has to be honest and heartfelt and sincere. Otherwise, why are we doing it, right? right. And then uh, I think maybe even more importantly, you need great arrangements, really interesting, different new arrangements that take a different look at the tune. Right. Like that Holiday Feeling, for instance, is a big, splashy, big band number you know, in the Steve and Edie recording. But for me and John's recording, we pared it way down. It's just trio with a little percussion. We slowed down the tempo, made it a little more romantic. You yeah. know, it's like you, the arrangements are key. Right. And speaking of the arrangements, as I was listening to it, I was going, oh, well, I was kind of get used to these, um, you know, uh, sometimes these albums will do uh, synth strings or something and they kind of came in and I went, well, OK. And I went, wait a minute. No, no, no. This is the real thing. This sounds real. Awesome. And and the more I listened, I really, you know, you just appreciate that lush uh, sound that people just they kind of forget about it they, they, or they 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 don't forget about it. But I think they uh, think they can solve that equation with synths or and things have gotten so good electronically now that i think it's very tempting to do that but man the minute you figure out that these are real strings the word is lush you know it just sounds great so i'm glad that you used some real strings but tell me about those arrangements who who worked on those and how did you did you have this uh, romantic moment where you were singing and the strings were behind you i don't know I'm, i don't know how did you how did i you wish we could have done it that way um i've done a lot of my string recordings in the past that way but this unfortunately we didn't do live I did all of the tracks live with the trio. Um, and then later the percussion, the saxophone and the strings were added. And, you know, the reason why we did it that way is honestly because it saves a lot of money. Like making an album is very, very expensive. So the fact that we have wonderful technology now and like, for instance, you know, the saxophone player on the album, my dear friend Joel Fromm, who is honestly one of the greatest living tenor players in the world. <laughs> um, he lives in Nashville so, and I live in LA. So rather than spending all of the album budget money on like flying him out, putting him up in a hotel, all of that, he could just record in a studio in Nashville. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, you know, making little cuts here and there like that allow us to afford real strings, things like that. You know what I mean? So you find a balance with the budget and do as much in person as you possibly can. Right. Well, it really pays off. It really sounds awesome. And it adds that it adds that traditional holiday feeling that, um, you know, it makes it like one of the records that I don't know what holiday records you grew up with. But it reminds me of, of course, the music, um, you know, that I grew up with as a kid. And it's it, it gives it a little authentic touch. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I mean, the string arrangements, who, which were written by Wayne Hahn, who also heads up Club 44 Records, are really beautiful string charts. They're gorgeous. Yes. Um, you know, Wayne is an incredible writer. And of course, you've got, I mean, just enjoying the album. I'm enjoying your voice. I'm enjoying what's happening. But I also couldn't help but be pulled into the the, the guys, uh, the folks you have playing with you. Um, are they your usual people? Are they somewhat, I know you mentioned the sax player just a moment ago, but um, how did you sort of arrange who was playing on this? Because you've got some heavy hitters here. Well, it was kind of an interesting story. Um, I was originally supposed to record the album in Nashville with my East Coast band. I have an East Coast band and a West Coast band, which a lot of artists do now because you, have to. you have to have an East yeah. Coast band and a West Coast band. Well, you do because you can't afford the plane tickets to fly everybody. everybody. <laughs> I mean, the plane tickets are outrageous. Right. So a lot of people work with different musicians on different coasts now, and I'm one of them. Um, my East Coast band, you know, they've been with me for over 20 years, uh, they were supposed to record the album in Nashville with me, but all of our flights got canceled. It wow. was just, you know, total airline lunacy moment. And we had to reschedule the recording for a month later here in LA. Um, so I ended up using my West Coast musicians on the album, Max Hamer, Carl McComas Reichel, my husband, Rick Monsaldano, who also produced the album. And uh, they were fabulous. I mean, I love them. We, we tour together all over the West Coast of the United States. Um, and they're also, you know, and this goes for the East Coast band too, like my best friends in the world. Right. So uh, it was really um, a lovely time. And the East Coast guys still contributed arrangements to the album. So they're still represented, which makes me really happy. And back to you enjoying the holidays so much. Are there some songs or albums, you know, that you recall from your uh, younger days or from from right now that are really, you know, sort of your touchstone holiday pieces or or, or pieces of music? Well, I have probably three Christmas 
thing like recordings i i really can't live without okay. um the nutcracker goes without saying i i need nutcracker to live okay. um, <laughs> but then um in terms of like jazz popular music ella wishes you a swinging christmas uh, great which is album. not only one of my favorite christmas albums but just one of my favorite ella albums period it's right. a fantastic album the frank duvall orchestra is ridiculous the arrangements are killing it's just such a great album um and then uh take sex he is christmas their first christmas album I can't live without it. It's the most beautiful record. Very cool. Good uh, yeah. suggestions. We're going to put that on here at the uh, t the Toth Hat holiday party or something. Um, <laughs> so, what's next for you? What you know? You've uh, you've got this album is brand new. Of course, you'll be doing some things with it right now. But are you thinking of uh, your next non holiday project? What's coming down the pike? Well, I'm not sure um, what concept I'm going to kind of go with, you know, that is going to require a little more thought. I have a few things I want to do. I just don't know which one I should do first. You know, I'm still figuring that out, but I am hoping to go into the studio sooner than later. Um, you know, I really love my label. We have a great relationship. We have a lot of fun making records together. So I'm like, great, let's make another one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's go. Let's do it. Why not? So, Why not? Hopefully soon. And you're a uh, you're a Long Island girl. I married a, a beautiful woman from Oceanside myself. So nice. I'm married into Long Island. I'm really from New Jersey. But <laughs> uh, think about, you know, talk to me a little bit about, you know, just that travel. Now you're in Los Angeles. Um, you know, when you look back on your career and your life and thinking about where you came from and, and where you are now, you know, how do you sort of rectify with, um, you know, going home, especially now at this holiday time? I don't know if you're going to Long Island for the holidays, but I'm not this year. I did last year, but I can't this year because I have work here in L.A. Okay. But, um, you know, I'm really grateful uh, that I grew up on Long Island. It was a really, really wonderful place to grow up uh, for a lot of reasons uh, in the 80s and 90s when I was a kid. Our school systems out there were amazing. We had huge music departments in all the schools. I had the most incredible teachers. I had access to New York City. My parents took me to see every Broadway show. Right. You know, um, and if it wasn't my parents, it was a grandparent or someone else. Um, you know, I spent my whole life on beaches and boats. I pretty much never dried off unless I was like going to the theater. Like it was a perfect childhood. You know right. what I mean? And then I was able to go to college in New York City and be close to home. So I'm really grateful for my years on Long Island for sure. I and still love it there. In the 80s and the 90s on Long Island, you got to enjoy plenty of Debbie Gibson on the radio, I'm sure. So, uh, oh, yes, uh, Debbie and Mariah. That's Our right. Long Island queens were well represented. Absolutely. Yes. Well, very good. What's the what's the holiday plan for you this year? You got anything uh, fun uh, cooked up? Or, or are we supporting this record? What are we doing? Are we doing some shows? Yeah, I got a bunch of tour dates coming up. Um, just kind of a small tour because, you know, there, you don't have like the longest amount of time to promote a Christmas album, you know, but then you do it year after year. So there will be Christmas dates, you know, every year for the next. Actually, I do Christmas dates every year regardless. What am I saying? I love Christmas shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I'll be in Sellersville, Pennsylvania on November 30th then December 1st through 4th. I'll be at Blues Alley in Washington, D.C., which is one of the most one of the oldest, most important jazz clubs in the country. I love that place. Then I will be at Durango Cool Jazz in Durango, Colorado, really cool venue on December 9th and 10th. And then the 21st and 22nd, I'm playing here in LA. And then the 26th and 27th at a fabulous newer venue in Paso Robles, California. Very cool. Some good, the Christmas tour. Uh, good wine out there in Paso Robles. And I uh, hope you'll get a chance to... Uh, to enjoy that beautiful spot it's a great great place i've never been there but i've seen some i've never been either it's, it's well i think it's nice let's google it after this interview let's, google <laughs> it. let's make sure it's nice well listen i don't want to take up any more of your time congratulations on the merriest i hope you have the merriest holiday season possible and thanks for giving us a new group of standard holiday traditional tunes to enjoy uh during our holiday season thank you